just found out that my husband, 38 male, has been hiding his child from me. Original post. I just found this out yesterday and have no idea what to do. I could barely type this out. I just still feel like I'm in a state of shock. Our marriage has been kind of rocky for the last year or so. My husband brought up starting a family a year ago when I had graduated from the university, but we had only been married for a year and I wasn't ready to start a family quite yet. I asked him for at least a couple of years and he seemed disappointed at first, but ended up agreeing without much fanfare, so I didn't think it was a big deal. Gradually, he started getting busier at work and taking more on-call shifts at night. He said his specialist had transitioned to outpatient work only, so he felt obligated to pick up the extra slack. I didn't think anything of it at first, but the on-call shifts never ended and he said he decided to transition to nights full time. I was pretty crushed because we wouldn't get to spend much time together and as I said as much, but he said his work was important and he saw a greater need at nights. Then he started having breakfast with the other physicians after his shifts and he would come home later and later. I would never be the type to think that my husband was cheating, but he was spending less and less time with me and I felt like my husband was a stranger. We were still having sex almost every day, so I let myself continue denying my suspicions. Yesterday though, something came over me and while he was sleeping, I decided to go through his phone. I went through his text messages and there were messages from a nurse that was a mixture of a conversation about the hospital, their affair, and a baby they both referred to in their messages as their son. Messages regarding daycare fees, pediatrician appointments, mixed in with texts about their sex life. I feel ill. I have no idea what to do. I know that I have to confront him, but I've been financially dependent on him since we've been married. I'm scared of life without him, but I know that I can't be with him. He's out for breakfast this morning, and I want to text him to not come home, but I don't feel like I have the strength to face him. Now my opinion for OP. This guy is a serial cheater. You need to get out of this relationship immediately and move on with your life. You're still young. You can find somebody that is deserving of you and your love. Sure, things are going to be tough at first, but it'll get better. You'll make it. You just need to get out of this and take that first step and get out of this relationship. Best of luck to you, OP. Now for the comments before reading the update. Oh my goodness. He's not a bad guy. Except for the part where he cheated on you, had a baby with another woman, is actively raising that child, and never said a word about it to you. What the F? And this? This? I only wish I would have given him a child sooner. Maybe I wouldn't be in this position now if I had. Are you effing kidding me? That has nothing to do with it. He'd cheat on you anyway. Do not devalue yourself like this. You were still young. Save the screenshots of everything and get out now. Save the evidence. Rinse him in a divorce. Don't confront him yet as he'll have the chance to destroy evidence. Collect what you can. Find a good lawyer. Maybe don't confront him yourself even. Rather, let the divorce papers do the talking. That allows you to avoid all the pleading lies and bullshit that will inevitably come from his mouth. Aim to separate yourself from this piece of shit swiftly and without drama. Start seeing a therapist to work through this trauma too. I only wish that I would have given him a child sooner. Maybe I wouldn't be in this position now if I had. Nope, 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 nope. Now you don't have to deal with having a child during this contentious situation. Cheaters will be cheaters will be cheaters. There was nothing you could have done to stop it. Do what you need to do and prioritize yourself, OP. You are young and have your whole life ahead of you. And you deserve to find a partner who really respects you. I don't know you, OP, but I know that you deserve better than this. Best of luck to you. Husband came home and took everything in my power not to confront him. I will get a lawyer. To those seeking about family, that's another reason I'm scared to confront him because he's helped my family out quite a bit. He's not a bad guy. I only wish that I would have given him a child sooner. Maybe I wouldn't be in this position now if I had. Edit 2. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your concerns. Many people are calling me a sugar baby and saying this is my fault. And you know what? Maybe you're right. I was discouraged along the way to get a job by my parents, my friends, and even my husband. But ultimately, 
The fault was mine for taking the easy way out. As far as my degree, that was all me. Granted, my husband made it easier for me to study without having to worry about bills, but I'll be damned if I let people give him credit for something that I earned. My parents are telling me that he made a mistake, that I shouldn't throw everything away, and that we can work through it, but I'm done. Now for the update. Update. For those of you that were curious, I reached out to an old professor of mine and sent some resumes out and continuing to send them out. I've also told my friends and family that I'm going to get a divorce. Most were supportive as soon as I told them. My parents still think that I should go to counseling to see if we can fix things, but they're supportive of me and said that they would be happy to have me back until I get back on my feet. For those of you saying that my parents were somehow profiting off of my marriage, that's not true at all. My parents have had some health problems and my husband helped them find specialists and explained all the medical jargon and really helped them through some really tough times. Anyway, when it came to my husband, despite of all of your warnings, I did contact a couple of lawyers, but I didn't feel great about it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but going behind his back and contacting people who seemed way too eager to help me in the marriage somehow made me feel sneaky. But it didn't even matter because as soon as I told my husband I needed to talk to him about something, he told me everything about how he didn't mean for things to end up this way. He's sorry that he hurt me. He does love me, but he understands that I could never believe him because of what he's put me through. He was sincere and remorseful, but I realized that what I thought was love was just an infatuation and the past week has shown me that. I told him I couldn't be with him any longer, that I had already started looking for jobs and was planning on moving back with my parents. He's agreed to let me keep my car and he said he had some money saved up for a trip for us that he never got around to using and said that I could have it. I refused, but he insisted. He also let me keep my credit card for emergencies until I get back on my feet, but I'm not sure how I feel about taking that. He offered to set me up in an apartment until I could afford to pay my own rent, but I declined that. I'll be moving out of here by next week and my husband has seen a lawyer about filing for divorce. He's also strongly suggested that I find one as well so that he or she can help me navigate the legal process, so I've been looking into that. He said that he would be willing to give me half of his salary for the three years that we were married, and I agreed to that, so that's that. Thank you to anyone that cared. Story 2. Am I the a-hole for refusing to change my daughter's clothes at a birthday party? Plus update. Original post. I, 34 female, have two kids, 8 male and 4 female. My daughter's name is Aurora. My husband, 36 male, and I chose that name because it was slightly similar to my late father-in-law's and worked well with our last names. It had nothing to do with the princess from Sleeping Beauty. In spite of that, we've had fun with that movie in the past, and ever since my daughter realized that she shared names with a Disney character, Princess Aurora has been her favorite. Our family went to Disney World in July, and while there, we bought my daughter a Princess Aurora costume. She adores it and wears it whenever she has the chance. Two weeks ago, one of Aurora's friends from school threw a princess-themed birthday party. She encouraged her friends to wear costumes. My daughter wanted to go as her favorite character, which didn't surprise me at all. When we got to the party, the birthday girl came to greet my daughter and she was also dressed as Princess Aurora. I didn't know what her costume was going to be prior to the party. I got worried for a second, but the birthday girl was actually really excited. She said that they looked like twins. It was adorable. They ran off to play and I forgot about the costumes for a while. About 30 minutes into the party, I was at a table with some of the other moms when the birthday girl's mother came up to me. She asked if I brought any spare clothes for Aurora. I said, yes. I always bring an extra shirt and shorts for her. She then asked me to change my daughter into the spare clothes and out of her costume. The mother explained that she hired a photographer to work around taking pictures of the kids and was also planning on getting a group photo near the end of the party. She didn't want anyone wearing the same costume as her daughter in these pictures. She also thought her daughter might get jealous since my kid gets to share her name with their favorite princess. Now, if the birthday girl was the one who had a problem, I might have considered changing Aurora into her spare clothes. But no, she was genuinely excited that they were dressed the same. It also didn't feel fair to force my daughter to be the only one without a costume in a party full of children in princess dresses. 
I said no and explained my reasoning to the girl's mom. She insisted for a few minutes, but I held my ground. Some of the other moms started to back me up, and she eventually got up and left. When I went to pick up my kids earlier this week, I ran into her friend's mom. She accused me of ruining her daughter's party by allowing Aurora to wear the same costume as her. She told me that she doesn't think that she'll ever be able to look at the pictures without being disgusted by my behavior. I thought she was exaggerating, but I'm starting to doubt myself. Our conflict has found its way to the mom's group chat that we're both in, and opinions over there are divided. Some think having two girls wear the same costume is no big deal. Others think that I should have changed my daughter's clothes. Am I the a-hole? Now for some comments before reading the update. Now, if the birthday girl was the one who had a problem, I might have considered changing Aurora into her spare clothes, but no. She was genuinely excited that they were dressed the same. It also didn't feel fair to force my daughter to be the only one without a costume and a party full of children in princess dresses. This is it right here. It's the little girl's special day. If she was bummed and wanted to be the only Princess Aurora, understandable to a point and maybe just let her have what she wants on her birthday. An entitled mom who just had to have pictures a certain way get bent. She accused me of ruining her daughter's party by allowing Aurora to wear the same costume as her. She told me she doesn't think that she'll ever be able to look at the pictures without being disgusted by my behavior. Laughing my ass off, imagine prioritizing some photos over your daughter's. Good time at a birthday party. Parents suck, not the a-hole. If the birthday girl was upset, I would have changed my daughter. I might have even driven home, changed her into her Merida dress, her second favorite, and then back to the party, but that's not what happened, and both were really excited. Oh, you have got to be kidding. You are really not the a-hole here. That mom, what a piece of work. Jealous that a four-year-old is going to outshine her precious? Gross. Gross and terrible behavior on her part? She should be ashamed. I think it's adorable the birthday girl was so excited that another Aurora showed up. Good job standing your ground. Nobody puts baby in the corner. LOL. ETA. That mom has some issues that she needs to work out. LOL. Wow. Now for the update. Update. Hey everyone. Thank you for assuring me that I did the right thing. This might get a little long. Since my post on Thursday, two days after the mom group started debating, three things happened. One, on Friday, my husband went to pick up the kids. The parents of one of my son's friends, who have a younger son in my daughter's class, asked if he knew about the costume fiasco, or as my friends are calling it, Aurora Gate. I had told him everything. He said the birthday girl's mother was being ridiculous as I had no idea what her daughter's costume would be. The mom he was talking to asked, wait, she didn't know? She called me and I told her my side. Turns out birthday girl's mom told people that I had been informed about the costume and to avoid dressing Aurora the same weeks prior to the party. The story was warped even before it got to the group chat. My side of the story made it to the group chat after some pressure birthday girl's mom eventually confessed that she lied about me. Most of the other moms had apologized to me by Sunday. Two, also apologizing to us on Sunday were birthday girl's father and maternal grandmother. She's been visiting for a few weeks. Apparently, birthday girl's mom had been complaining about the party almost daily. Since they got the photos back, birthday girl's mom has been insisting that there isn't a single good picture of her daughter without another girl wearing the same costume. Aurora and the birthday girl were playing together most of the party. She was especially upset that the group photo, which shows the birthday girl in the center and my daughter to her right. There were two girls between them, but she thinks that they're too close to each other. Birthday girl's dad had been listening to these complaints since the party. He told us that unless his daughter was in the room, he couldn't look at the pictures without his wife making a comment about me, my daughter, or how we ruined birthday girl's birthday. It all came to a head on Saturday. While talking with my grandmother after birthday girl went to bed, the mother said that she no longer wanted to make a photo album of the party. They had gotten a photographer for both the album and social media purposes. Both birthday girl's dad and her grandmother wanted the album. The three had a fight that lasted about 15 minutes before the grandmother told 
birthday girl's mom to stop obsessing over her daughter's friend. She said all that matters is that birthday girl had fun, and all the photos reflect that. They told us all that when they called to apologize. They wanted birthday girl's mom to apologize too, and she hasn't. 3. Aurora came home from school yesterday wearing a headband with her name and a rose embroidered on it. Birthday girl had her grandmother make it for her. Me and my husband are still in contact with the birthday girl's father, and we're trying to set up a play date for the girls next week. Also, there were some things that I wanted to clarify about my previous post. My daughter and the birthday girl aren't physically similar. Aurora has wavy brown hair. Birthday girl has straight blonde hair. We're all Caucasian, but my daughter is more tan. The party was held at a kid's party venue, not the girl's birthday place. There were 19 girls and a toddler at the party. All were in costume. There were a few boys, but they were older. I'm guessing they were related to the birthday girl. I was never friends with the birthday girl's mom. Her request at the party was probably the third time that we've ever talked, and the first that wasn't about the weather. The birthday girl's mother didn't want me to change my daughter's clothes just for the group photo at the end. She wanted me to change her 30 minutes into the party for all the pictures. I mentioned in a comment that if the birthday girl had a problem with my daughter's costume, I might be willing to drive home to change Aurora into her Marita dress, her second favorite, and then return to the party. But I want to stress that I'd only do that if the birthday girl was upset when we got to the party, not if her mother was annoyed half an hour later. By then, my daughter was already playing with the birthday girl and her friends. To those who said that I could change Aurora at the party and or use this as a teaching moment, I'm going to assume that you've never met a four-year-old. My daughter is kind-hearted and would definitely do it to make her friend happy, but she'd still view this as punishment. It's also cruel to take a child away from a party and tell them that they can no longer play princess with their friends. I refuse to alienate or upset my daughter when she's done nothing wrong. I absolutely don't regret my decision. And that's it. Once again, thank you all. Story 3. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents respect goes both ways and denying them access to my children? I, female 32, have two wonderful children, 6 male and 4 female, with my husband, 35 male of 8 years. It is important to note that I am white, while my husband is an immigrant to my country and was born and raised in Turkey. My parents, male 60 and female 57, have never taken a shining to my husband, and it's been a rocky road. But everyone is civil. That being said, there was a bit of drama when naming our children as my husband and I wanted names that honored both cultures and would be easy to pronounce for everyone in both languages. Think Omar, Nadia, Adam, etc. My parents vehemently disagreed with their choices, specifically when it came to our son's name, and they made that very clear. This story mostly centers around my son, the child with the name that they dislike the most. I recently overheard my dad talking to my son, and he used an absolutely butchered nickname, which I had never heard before. My son told my dad that he didn't like it, and my dad told him that he should get used to it because everyone at school will use the name. I intervened at that point and asked my dad what he thought he was doing. My dad said that since my husband and I had chosen an exotic name, his words, it was not his fault that there would be horrible and ridiculous nicknames that would come out of it. I said that any name, exotic or not, could have some kind of horrible nickname come from it, and as an adult, he should have stopped using the nickname when my son said that he didn't like it. My dad's argument was that a bully at school wouldn't stop if my son said to stop and we needed to teach my son now that by telling people to stop, it will only egg them on. He also said that he wouldn't be surprised if the teachers also started using the nickname, and that children should expect to be mocked. I asked my dad if he was comparing his behavior to a bully, and he said no, he was teaching my son to toughen up. My dad said that it wasn't his fault that we couldn't pick a good old English name like Henry or Robert. I was so mad. I told my dad that if he expected to be respected by our family unit, we all deserved respect in return, and that mocking a child's name was beyond the pale. My mom, who had been listening to our conversation, stepped in and said that my dad wasn't mocking my son. He was giving him a taste of the future, and we should be thankful to them for showing us 
what a bad choice we made while there is still time to change it. I kicked both of my parents out of my home and told them that they were not welcome back until they could apologize to my son and use his real name when talking to and about him. Now my sister 29 female has been sending me messages saying that I need to be aware that they come from a different time and I shouldn't separate children from their grandparents. She said that I could have had a discussion with my dad without barring them from my home and family and I have hurt them beyond belief just in time for Christmas. We all should be together. Was I too harsh? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. You're right on the money. The kid might encounter bullies, so I'm going to bully him now to get a head start on it. Coming from another time is not an excuse for racism. I bet he has friends with weird names too. Let the kid determine if his name is that bad, and then he can use his middle name or nickname if he approves of it. Being bullied by his grandfather, yikes. It's not you separating the kids from their grandparents, it's you protecting your kids from bullies. Thank you for your comment. My sister has been quite stuck on the bullying comment and said that I had been particularly unfair. So I am pleased to hear that my statement wasn't unfounded. Not the a-hole. Oh, the narcissistic parents sent in their flying monkeys. A tale as old as time. They were awful to your son and I would have blocked access as well. What if you hadn't heard this toxic BS? The things that they said about and to their grandchild are just unreal. If you do change your mind, they apologize, supervised visits, please. Absolutely. I have a feeling my mom will eventually try to apologize in some way, but I do not plan on giving them unrestricted access to my children at any point. I am genuinely worried about what has been said when I wasn't there to overhear. That's all for today. If you're enjoying this story, please like the video and share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you.